Hello, something a little different today. This is a electronic typewriter. I do love these types of things. I picked this one up for a whole two pound. Fun. So I just want to go over what it is, what vintage it is and that kind of thing. And what kind of features you get on such a old, well, it's a typewriter, but you know, it's such a typewriter of this vintage. It obviously hasn't got a screen, though some of these do. This is, as you can probably see, the standard 200i from Olympia. It was released, I can't find out exactly when, but the printing on the plastic says 1987. So it must have been between 1987 and what I can tell about 1993. So that's when this was sold. There were various models of this, some under the star type brand and various other things but this is the standard 200i the i don't know what it stands for intelligent interface don't know but some have the i and some don't the ones that have the i seem to have a the ones that have the i seem to have some kind of 20 pin port on the back it refers to it as a ttl universal interface which basically means it's a well it's a generic port each pin does something or a combination of pins do things it's transistor to transistor logic that's what ttl stands for and without a pin out or some kind of um, documentation it's very difficult to work out what it does i'll do a video on that later explaining about the mystery port and what i found and what i hope to do with it well, we, well, what I hope to do is make a bit of a text adventure game, come out of here and take input. I can see it sending stuff out when you type on the keyboard, and you can receive data which prints. So, it should be possible. Might have to use an Arduino or something to get a few bits working, but that's the plan. But anyway, enough about that. Let's look at these wonderful little buttons. Now, one thing about this, get out of shot now. As you would with a traditional typewriter, as you can see this thing is huge, it's an A3 one and it weighs about 10 kilos so it's massive. You would normally load up the paper first, and you know, via some kind of mechanical mean, you know, pull the paper through. You can see probably down there where a knob might have been, but it's all electric and electronic. So it's not quite like that. You have to be powered up to actually do anything. So without further ado, let's turn it on. Much like a normal printer or something, it has to like align itself first. I've set the margins up to be roughly in the middle. Loading the paper. Pretty standard stuff. Pop the paper in. Until you feel some resistance. Normally you twist it. But with this, you've got two keys down here. One that pushes the roller one way and one the other way. You want to go down, so this one down here. Not quite in. There you go. Try it again. There we go. These are slightly misaligned. Whatever. So, snap that back down. Snap that back down. And here we have our printer. There are a few buttons down here. This one is volume of the beep. I'll show some close-up shots. Which is a bit interesting because it doesn't seem to make that much difference. Here's it on lowest, medium and highest. So not much difference really. Here we have the character spacing. So we've got 10, 12, 15 and PS. So I've not been able to find any documentation on what PS stands for. So if anyone knows, let me know. Online mode is related to the port on the back. No documentation or any information I found on that. Though there seems to be some kind of communication box or printer box that plugs into the back of that. And that would, I'm assuming, do a few things. Bridging certain pins causes this to go into online mode and standby. I've not been able to find online mode and actually receiving data, which may go solid. So also down here we have the line spacing, 
So we have one, one and a half, two and three. We also have auto return, which makes a satisfying beep, which basically when you reach the end of the line, it will come back, which is quite useful if you're just going to keep typing. And down here, we have a selection of four lights. We have bold down here on the left hand side. And also down here, we have bold, kind of like a large letter spacing. Then I'm entirely sure that was four. Underline and center. As you can see, there are also extra like things that can be knocked out for extra features, which this one does not support. Uh, and then we have this code button, which controls all the electronical smart functions of this device. You can tell what each one are going to do because at the front of the keys, we have various little symbols, which denote what will happen when you hold down the code button. So we have two margin buttons to set the left and right margin, depending on where you're currently are along there. So if you want to have an A3 piece of paper, you can set the margins to be there and there. Also, if you ever want to reset it, when you turn the machine on, hold down code when it's powering up, and it resets everything back to default. Quite useful when you're messing around and you manage to change the language of the pinwheel and various other strange things that happen. So, let's have a play around, shall we? Let's start off with just ordinary typing. Now, odd little features, got the caps lock key here. But to turn it off, you have to press shift to send it back. You can't just toggle the caps lock key, which is a bit odd. I'm guessing that was a normal thing back then, but it is a little odd in modern context. So we have hello world. Now, one thing I have noticed uh, with this is with the way I'm sitting and the size of it, I've been, when messing around with it, I've left the top up, so I can actually see what it's doing. Because you almost need to be up here and perching down on it, which seems a little bit high. So you almost find like you're peering over the top constantly. So that's a odd choice. So let's try bold. So it's code and U, which is a bit confusing because you expect it to be B, but this is from the 80s, so normal convention don't apply. And anyone coming to this is probably using a conventional manual typewriter at this point, so that isn't really going to be confusing to them. So let's try it again. Caps lock for the H. And you can see it's like double hitting it. If you type fast enough, it's hitting it. Now, let's try, let's turn off bold. Let's try underline. Now this is quite cool. So we'll do the same thing again. As you can see, it's not underlining it. Yet. But when I hit return, it will draw the underline. Which is just cool. There's a bit of um, splatter when it's going a bit too quick. Also, for whatever reason, the lift up tape is only partly working. And when you underline, it takes a while to go all the way back. So you can see it's kind of working. It is kind of lifting off the ink, but realistically, not so well. Okay, so let's try center because this is very weird. As you can see, the carriage has ended up in the middle. And what it does is, when I type, it won't actually uh, print it to the paper at that point. It will move half a space to the left each time I hit, and then it will just write it all in one go. So without the little screen on the front here, it's a little worrying because you don't quite know what you've typed in, so you've got to be very careful. Let's try all three. 
So we got bold, spaced out, underlined, centered. Okay, so we have all of them selected. Let's try this again. So we got H E L L O world. Now what it will do, it will do it twice. So it will print the words first and then the underline. So here we go. And there we go. We have hello world. Underlined, bold and quite spaced out. Quite a nice header. Now there is a buffer here. So when I want to delete, it will go straight back to there and it will try to erase. Probably not very well, but it will try. So it tried its best, it failed. Sometimes it manages to, to remove some of it, but the lift off ribbon is pretty much dry. I need to replace all these bits and pieces. But the point is it does work. I don't know how old the uh, ribbon is, both of them, but I do know that the lift off ribbon was pretty much brand new when it was in there because it hadn't been set up. Though it's pretty much dry and doesn't really work. Overall, it works very well. So let's have a look at the letter spacing. So this is the default letter spacing. So let's just turn. In fact, let's just turn that off. We don't need bold. So we got. Let's do hello world again because why not? Let's go to the next line. So you can see it gets really tight. Last one, this is where it gets weird. I don't know what this setting does. But that is just garbage. So I'm not entirely sure what that setting is. But interestingly, if you set it to the tightest and then spread it out, it's actually wider than the original but shorter than the other one. So you've got a l quite a lot of control regarding letter spacing with this machine, which is kind of cool. Line height, uh, you know, it's line height. So we've got one and a half, two and three. We do have other things on the code. So we have like extra symbols like hash, degree, and good old pipe. So if you need to do like stuff like tables and lines you can also have like a hyphen and that's about it in terms of additional symbols we have odd symbols like three quarters and quarter as well as as well as one third and one half we also have things like power of two so squared and cubed and that's really it it's a very basic it's a very basic electronic typewriter you can do a lot of advanced functions the tabbing and various things and the pipes you can do some quite advanced layouts with it if you have the time and the patience in the manuals for these there's generally some tutorials to go through i haven't been able to find this actual manual for this so the ones I found have a lot more features than this one which is which is kind of cool the keys are rather nice they are mechanical keys in a way I can't quite work out what they are from what I can tell they're supposed to be cherry keys from some description they are definitely linear keys so with o-rings on them so you have a very very faint click can't really hear it you get more of a ding from the the spring especially from the likes of like the return because it's actually a very loose key our wonderful mess that we've made
But the ribbon itself, it's a pretty standard affair. It's your, it's your normal cartridge type. It contains quite a large amount of ribbon. You can't probably see on the camera, but there's about this, a ring about this much left, and it's been used about this much, so it still has quite a fair bit. It's well aligned and the ink is, I don't think you can see that, but the ink is still perfectly fine. Kind of curious to see. What's been written on this, but I'm not going to mess around with that. But yeah, it's in good condition considering the age. There's no date on this. I don't know when it was manufactured, but obviously this was the last time it was used. And you just pop it back in like so. In fact, the uh, takeoff ribbon, I don't know if it's misaligned or what. I've had a play around of it and I can't really do much with it, but it did work for a short period of time. It has since stopped working. I've run it on long a bit and it hasn't really made a massive amount of difference. It is correctly aligned. So there's that. And the only other thing to look at is the actual pinwheel itself. But the uh, ribbon is currently threaded through there so let's not mess with that too much. But yeah. So all in all, it's a pretty interesting machine. You probably shouldn't do that while it's turned on. So let's just pop this back in there. There's a few little clips here. Let's use the rear of this one, I suppose. But it is nice to type on. It's uh, you not being able to see exactly what you're typing is a bit difficult. I mean, you really have to like perch over. So, but if you obviously lift the top up, you can see it in a more comfortable position. So. Currently got the letter spacing on quite wide, which was silly. See, at the end it beeps. So as I told I said, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and comment. Any questions, let me know. I'll do a video on the odd port on the back, separate, because I don't want to muddy this down. This has been a, you know, a general look at an electronic typewriter from Olympia, mid 80s, the standard 200i. Fascinating little machine, very large, but I've had fun cleaning it up and having a play of it. And I hope you enjoyed watching the video too. Any questions, let me know, but it is a very simple electronic typewriter. But back in the day, I suppose that's kind of what people wanted. It's very odd. Kind of that odd period of electronics and computers and typewriters. But I had fun. So until next time, goodbye.